This is Dick's Sporting Goods Kickoff Week. Welcome to Nashville, Tennessee, a city that's been a stage for debuts for decades. Tonight, Mark Stoop steps into the head coaching spotlight for the first time, trying to resurrect Big Blue. Speaking of resurrections, re-enter Bobby Petrino, this time at Western Kentucky. It's a new season. It's new hope. It's the Cats and Toppers right now. Welcome to ESPN's College Football as part of Dick's Sporting Goods Kickoff Week. LP Field in Nashville, Tennessee for a bluegrass battle between Western Kentucky and Kentucky. Now we say welcome inside our broadcast booth. Two-time Super Bowl champ David Diaz Infante, Joe Davis, City Time of the new season. There's excitement. There's uncertainty in the part of these two programs with a pair of new head coaches. Mark Stoops, a head coach for the first time. Bobby Petrino resurfacing after a year out of the game. So question marks abound tonight. Absolutely, and Bobby Petrino is a proven winner. He's done it everywhere he's been. And he's done it behind a high-powered offense. Mark Stoops, a rising star with coaching pedigree, and he has a reputation of rebuilding defenses. The question is how do both these coaches implement their plans with their existing personnel? It'll be interesting to see. Speaking of question marks, there's a relatively important one for Kentucky. Even right now, we're not sure who their starting quarterback will be. Yeah, we I mean, hire Neil Brown as offensive coordinator to bring the air raid system in. You'd like to have some certainty at quarterback. It'll be a game time decision. Maxwell Smith is a guy that's accurate. He's a leader. He has a, probably the best grasp of the offense. Jalen Whitlow is a guy that's athletic. He's got a quick release, and he's probably the most improved player coming out of fall camp. So we're interested to see what happens there. There's one thing we know for sure, Dave, it's that Western Kentucky's got one of the best players in the country you've probably never heard of, and Antonio Andrews, their running back. Antonio, uh, Ed, Ed, Antonio is a guy that has rushed all purpose over 3,000 yards, second only to Barry Sanders. He's got great ball skills. He's quick. He can make you miss in the middle of the field. He's a former quarterback, so he's got great football intelligence. All right, and he'll play for Bobby Petrino, makes his Western Kentucky debut on the other side. We'll visit with him before kickoff of Kentucky and Western Kentucky after this break. LP Field in Nashville, Tennessee, the site for this season opener. Kentucky and Western Kentucky, both of these programs beginning new eras. And for Western Kentucky, it's with Bobby Petrino, whose story's been well documented. He had just signed a 10-year deal with Louisville when he took the Falcons job in 2007, got off to a 3-10 and 10 start there. On the same day Mike Vick was sentenced to prison, Petrino let the team know that he had quit by leaving a note in the lockers, was introduced as Arkansas's head coach the next day. Had good success there, but then a couple of years later, spring of 2012, that motorcycle crash that led to his firing five days later. But nearly eight months to the day that he was fired, he was hired as the second head coach of the FBS era at Western Kentucky. And he now stands by with our Chris Button. Thanks, guys. Coach, it's been 19 months since you coached a game. Can you describe the feelings that you're going through right now? Uh, I'm fired up and ready to go. Our players had a good warm-up. We're about ready to kick it off, so let's go have some fun. You said Friday night you get your best sleep. Were you actually able to get some shut-eye last night? I did. I fell asleep early. <laughs> well, good luck, guys. Thank you. Go ahead, guys, back to you. All right. Now, Coach Petrino says that he's enjoying it a little bit more right now, understanding that this is his second chance. And looking forward to coaching this opener against another guy that's got some vested interest in it, Mark Stoops, who's in his 20th season in the college ranks now, but his first as a head coach. Spent the last nine years as a defensive coordinator. Six at Arizona, the last three at Florida State. Said the draw of the SEC is what got him to Lexington to take over this program. Western Kentucky won the toss. They'll receive... In those new red uniforms with the chrome helmets. This is Joe Mansour to kick it away to Antonio Andrews. 
A pair of programs looking for positive starts to new eras. Start 2013. And it seals over the head of Andrews, so Western Kentucky to begin at the 25-yard line. Open to start this Bobby Petrino era with their second straight win over their in-state SEC fall in Kentucky. Beat them 32-31 the season ago in Lexington. Antonio Andrews threw the game-winning two-point conversion pass in that game. The guy pulling the trigger this year will be Brandon Doughty, 6'3", 210 pound junior out of Davie, Florida. This will be his first real game action in two years. He'd taken over the starting job in his redshirt freshman season, but then was hurt. And he played just mop-up duty a season ago. From the 25, off play action, looking downfield, going underneath and got a completion, but a short gain. Khalid Henderson there to make the stop on Willie McNeil. Second down as we look at our impact players this evening. They look at tight end for Tyler Higby and for Western Kentucky. He's a guy that can stretch the field, run the seams, and control the middle of the field. Can be a quarterback's best friend. Avery Williamson at linebacker is a tackling machine. He's their best player on that side of the ball. They have to help control that middle of the field against Western Kentucky's run game and their play action game. Gave him four on first down, second and six. And Nick Boss leading the way in the sweep for Antonio Andrews. Andrews cuts it back and sits his way near midfield. Pick up a 20 for a guy that became the second player in NCAA history to top 3,000 all-purpose yards a season ago. Barry Sanders, the other. Yeah, you'll see him, his ability, the patience and let his blockers set up downfield, the vision, and then knowing where the pursuit is coming. He's a guy, Andrews, that gets it done inside and on the perimeter for Western Kentucky. Yeah, it's a spread offense, but Bobby Petrino plans to tailor it around their skill at that running back position. First and ten from the 49, and Dowdy off play action once more. Into the flats for Leon Allen. Breaks a couple of tackles. Gets five, second and five. Over to make the stop, Corey Brown with Ashley Lowry. We're talking to the offensive coordinator, Jeff Brom, talked about how do you get the conference going in your quarterback, and you're seeing it right now. Some easy completions, putting the quarterback on the move, some nice tosses, build his confidence, and also getting that running game going so the play-action game opens up. They'll back him into the gun for the second down and five play. Yeah, and he looks to throw on the slant, got a completion, got a first down and more to Nick Norris. True freshman is inside the 30 on his first collegiate reception out of Booker T. Washington in Miami. Zedaria Smith came back to make the stop after a gain of 19. Well, if Jeff Brown was trying to get Brandon Dowdy into a rhythm, he's done a great job. Clean pocket by the offensive line, and the freshman, Nick Norris, comes up to catch in traffic. They need young guys on the perimeter to step up here tonight. There's Jeff Brom, who's on Bobby Petrino's staff at Louisville from 04 to 06. And he gives it to Andrews into the teeth of the defense. And into the strength of this Kentucky defense. Three players returning on that defensive line. And then Mike Douglas, who's second on the two deep, in there to make the stop there. The question not up front, but in the back seven for this Kentucky defense. Yeah, absolutely. They need the help of the guys up front. They've got to stop the run. Look, these are SEC-type defensive linemen, 320 pounds and 340 pounds at the defensive tackle spots, tall and long on the edges. They've got to slow this Western Kentucky offense down. Andrews got two on first down, second and eight, with trips to the short side. They get it out there in a hurry to Willie McNeil, who's close to a first down. Avery Williamson pushed him out of bounds. They spot the ball at the 16. And with it up for a first down. There's Jeff Brom, offensive coordinator, been with Bobby Petrino for a long time. And these guys know how to adapt their system to the personnel they have. Willie Taggart in Western Kentucky, a lot of two tight end sets, running the football a lot last year. It's fitting into their play action game. So I think they're getting a lot of crossover right now offensively. Now, the staff said there's no use in totally getting rid of what they were good at a season ago. 
What much of this? An empty set and a quick throw to the sideline. That's Nicholas Norris again. A true freshman who's undersized, but good speed as his second catch on this opening drive. We're, we're seeing a mixed bag of tricks here. Quick throws, play action. That one just a hit, out route to his wide receiver out there. A hitch route on the edge against soft coverage. It's just pitch and catch. Brandon Dowdy off to a great start. Nice. Measured for the first down here. As a redshirt junior out of Davie, Florida, continues to move Jeff Brom and Bobby Petrino's offense down the field. Accurate thrower, and you've talked about it a little bit, at his best in rhythm in that quick game. And that's extra important, not just on the first drive of a game, but on the first drive that he's been the guy in two years. Yeah, that's very important to get him off to a good start. And I like what they've done in terms of play selection, a good mix between run and pass, three and five step drops, play action in there as well, building his confidence. And he seems to be in command of this offense, knowing where to go with the football. They said that he won the job over DeMarcus Smith wasn't a big battle, but enough where there was some written in the papers about it. And Smith might challenge for the job, but won the job because he was able to grasp the offense and because he completed passes at a higher efficiency. On this opening drive, he's five for five, and it's second and short. Andrews up the gut as a first down. First down and goal for Western Kentucky at the three yard line. Interior of that defense closed down, but not before a gain of five. There's Jeff sig signaling in the plays. Again, that offensive line right now, the strength of their team is getting the better of, really the strength of Kentucky's defense, that defensive line right now. Yeah, Keyshawn Simpson comes into the game. Bosch, the fullback, motions out. On first down and goal, it's Simpson off the left side. Simpson reaches for the touchdown. A guy that started last season as the starter, but lost his job after an injury. You'll see outside zone to the left. Great job by Keyshawn Simpson of pressing the front side of the hole. The offensive line moves the line of scrimmage. Touchdown, Western Kentucky. And Garrett Schwetman out of the hole to Hendricks. Breakfield makes it 7 0. And a successful start for the Hilltoppers. Keyshawn Simpson, a guy the staff raved about, had a great camp and has Western Kentucky in front. Make it look easy, scoring seven nothing on their opening drive of the year. Now we get our first look at Kentucky with Raymond Sanders and DeMarco Robinson back to receive the kick from Hendricks Breakfield. And it's the junior Robinson from the four. And DeMarco Robinson with a solid return, hurtling his way to the 29. One of our many question marks will be answered right now. And it'll be answered by Jalen Whitlow, the 6'2 sophomore out of Prattville, Alabama, who started the final seven games of last season after Maxwell Smith's injury. Threw for about 800 yards, completing more than 50% of his passes, but took a lot of heat in that 2-10 and 10 season. And he talked to offensive coordinator Neil Brown about it. He thought that he was thrown into the fire before he was ready, with not a lot around him, and that a lot of that criticism was unfair. Out of the gun from the 29. As Sanders swinging out. The middle's closed up. Throws and gets it broken off. That was Cam Thomas, the defensive captain that got his hand on it. And Whitlow tried to force one in on his first toss of the season. Yeah, that's one thing all young quarterbacks got to do. Look, he's going to extend the play. That's why he's in there. Try and extend it. Create something with his athleticism. But you've got to take care of the football. And now the whistle is dead. You know, we're going to see Kentucky moving at a quick pace. Mm -hmm. 
with a bit too frenetic to begin, as Tom Ritter tells us, it's a false start. When Mark Stoops is hired, he vowed to hire an offensive coordinator that would make things exciting. Neil Brown, certainly that guy. And a move at a quick tempo. Harkening back to the Hal Mummy days, right? The guy that he played for in the right. late 90s at Kentucky is a walk-on. Here's Raymond Sanders. And Sanders back to the original line of scrimmage and a gain of four or five. Arius Wright with a stop up from his safety spot. This is an up-tempo spread with question marks at several spots. Quarterback will continue to be one of them until one of these guys takes over. Wide receiver a question mark as well. They only return three wideouts that caught a ball last year. Well, I think that's why Jalen's in there right now. They're trying to get as many athletes on the field as possible. Third down and ten. Whitlow with time. Throws tall for Robinson, and it's fourth down. So Kentucky's opening possession in this new air raid offense produces a three and out with Jalen Whitlow at the reins of the offense. And that brings the punt team out of the field for the Wildcats. And, and you wonder if, if not knowing, or maybe they didn't know who the guy was going to get the nod and when they found out, whether it was last night or, or, or when that was, and, and leading to a little bit of the angst right there by Jalen Whitlow, a couple high throws, forcing the ball. Mm -hmm. Interesting to see how quickly he can calm down. It's Landon Foster, who was a freshman All-American last year to punt it. Antonio Andrews back there with Willie McNeil. Good punt. Andrews will return from the 25. A return of six yards in Western Kentucky to take over at the 31. Needed just nine plays to march it down the field and score on their opening possession. What do they have in store for drive two? The Highway 65 South, which runs right by the stadium here, brought fans from both fan bases to this site. It was jammed up for a good part of the afternoon as they filed in here to LP Field in Nashville. And Western Kentucky putting on a show for its fans. Nine plays, 75-yard scoring drive. You couldn't ask for a better start for Western Kentucky. It's Ant Antonio Andrews getting a start of the ground game. An accurate throwing by Brandon Dowdy. Five for five on the drive. A great mix of run and pass. And it's Keyshawn Simpson finishing it off some tough running down at the goal line. And that's the first drive with a new staff. A lot of times you'll see a new offense put in. It takes sometimes a couple games to get going. But that looked like mid-season form from a group that had been with his staff for more than just a camp. Out of the pistol on first down. Play action. Dowdy, nice pocket presence. Watch McNeil off his fingertips. That's the book on Willie McNeil. Great athleticism, the ability to run by the defense of Willis and Lowry, but he will drop some. Yeah, needs some consistency in the area catching the ball. Boy, they, they will take design shot plays. Jeff Brom talked about that, and there is one. You see Dowdy climb the pocket, trust his protection. And boy, that is a throw. That's a strike down the middle of the field. Perfect touch. Those, those plays you gotta, you gotta make when you have an opportunity. Those are the ones that change the uh, complexity of the game. Those are the ones the staff harped on when we talked with him yesterday. As Andrews tries to get outside, but can't. Corey Brown tugs him down. The guy making his first career start at that strong side linebacker spot. And it's third down at about 13. You know, we see Corey Brown. He's in there in nickel as well. But he's cheating back into the box off that slot receiver, trying to create an extra edge defender for Kentucky. That time he gets his right, and he's there to take on and make the tackle for a loss. Dowdy goes to the flats. Can Andrews break a tackle or two? Ball pops out. Kentucky falls on it. Inbounds Wildcat football. They forced only 12 turnovers a season ago. That was fourth fewest in the nation. Avery Williamson, though, all over it defensively for Kentucky. And you'll see right there. 
Andrews making the catch, makes the first guy miss getting downfield. The ball gets a little bit away from his body, and it's a defender that comes back from the sidelines to his blind side that knocks that ball loose. And an injured player on the field, that's Dante Rump. So Kentucky forces a turnover. We'll take a break. They'll be back on offense on the other side. Stoops spent the last three seasons as the defensive coordinator. Florida State with high hopes in this 2013 season. Jalen Whitlow back out there at quarterback and giving it to Raymond Sanders. And again, a bait on first down. Donovan Dowling with his stop, but it'll be second down and short. So Mark Stoops with his head coaching debut, last nine seasons as the defensive coordinator, six at Arizona, and three of them at Florida State. Back to the ground with a hurry up, and they pick up a first down inside the 30. Like I said, I was a rising star in the coaching ranks with a reputation of rebuilding defenses into top in the country, and certainly did that at Florida State, where they really dominated. Also, great recruiters on that whole staff. First and 10. Sanders again tried to cut it back against the grain, but the back flow of that defense was there. Andrew Jackson, one of the guys, and Jackson gets called for a penalty. A kid that was in the middle of it at the end of the game last year. And then again in the news somewhat this week. For some comments that really were not too bad during the press conference. Talked about hitting Kentucky in the mouth and leaving. They have offsetting penalties here. Hey, I, I love the emotion. I love the passion for the game. As guys are getting at it, it's offsetting. Uh, but you got to have control. You can't cost your team down here when you got your backs to the end zone. Both guys got to watch it. So again, offsetting, second down and eight. And to the slot on the near side of the field is a true freshman and Ryan Timmons. This staff is very high on. Another flag down. False start, Kentucky. False start, 77. Offense, five yard penalty, remain second down. Left tackle, Darian Miller. We saw Ryan Timmons coming in. Substitution key when you're trying to be up tempo. Communication is critical, and there's an example of what happens. A young guy running on the field late, cost him a penalty. Second false start in two drives for Kentucky. So second down and 13 from the 33. Check with me. Staff takes a look at what they've got defensively and relays the play in. This is Jonathan George bouncing off contact. And George with a gain of seven. Dowling with his second tackle. Makes it a third down and a much more manageable seven. Well, nice running by Jonathan George. Even better call, Neil Brown. Talk to us about the balance he's going to strive for here at Kentucky. Did a little bit of Texas Tech, but especially with their personnel and youth at wide receiver, being able to run the ball effectively is critical. So they're calling it third down and five. Pressure picked up. Whitlaw throws to the sideline with a flag down and has Anthony Kendrick inside the 10. Jonathan Dowling pushed him out. Will await the call. As it stands, a gain of 15 for Kendrick. Yeah, Tom Ritter to let us Prior know. To the pass being thrown, holding defense number eight. A penalty is declined. First down. Marcus Ward grabbed the hold. That couldn't stop Anthony Kendrick from getting his first catch in two seasons. Missed all the last year for academics and has him set up with first and goal. Well, that time you see Whitlow again buying time with his legs. This time making an accurate throw down the field to his tight end. From the eight-yard line, Whitlow with a quick throw in space. And Arias right up from his safety spot to shut the play down. And a quick throw to Alexander Montgomery. 
A converted corner playing his first game at the safety spot. Second and goal on a loss of two. Well, this is the area of the, fi uh, the, area of the field sometimes that spread teams can struggle. Tight spaces, less ground to defend. It's harder to stress the defense. Again, you see them attempt to throw a bubble right there. They're going to have to get something going in the run game, draw something up the middle to get it going for them offensively. Again, difficult to spread the field out here in the, in the red zone deep. Yeah, as Kentucky found out last year, Dave, third last nationally in red zone offense. Not much on his second down play. The interior of that defense with Devontae Terrell, a redshirt freshman, joining Brian Shorter. And it's third down and goal. And there's Devontae Terrell at 320 pounds, six feet tall. That's what you call a fire plug in the middle there again. That D line has got to establish the line of scrimmage and make Kentucky one dimensional. Critical third down. Is there a way to take this field? Two backs on third and goal. Four man rush picked up. Throwing short of the goal line. Have a completion, but. Right on top of it, Marcus Ward to shut the play down, and it's fourth and goal. It's important that Kentucky come away with points. Capitalizing on turnovers are what good teams do. But it's Joe Mansour, who's been a kickoff guy for the first three years of his career. This is first field goal kick of his career. And it has Kentucky on the board from 22 yards. The senior out of LaGrange, Georgia, getting his first chance as the place kicker. And getting the Wildcats on the board. So 7-3, both teams having some success in this first quarter. First quarter of a couple of new eras. That includes the Bobby Petrino era at Western Kentucky. He's guided his teams to bowl games in seven of his eight years as a head coach. That includes a couple of BCS bowls. And he's 8-0 and oh in season openers. What's that say about a head coach? Uh, so there's a guy that knows that get his team prepared. And talking with Jeff Brom, he goes, look, he's one of those intense coaches you're ever going to be around. He is hands-on, on the field, and knows every aspect of the game and coaches with great detail, and that has showed itself here on the first couple possessions by Western Kentucky. The off offensive execution has been outstanding for the first game, new system, new players. Give him a lot of credit, Jeff Brom and that coaching staff for getting this Western Kentucky team ready. So his offense will come back onto the field for the third time, a touchdown drive, and then a drive that ended with a fumble. Tyree Robinson back with Antonio Andrews for this kick from Joe Mansour. Muggy but beautiful night here in the Music City, one of America's great cities, Nashville. Andrews from a couple yards deep. And Andrews cut down at the 18. Special teams tackle made by Malcolm McDuffin. And back comes this Western Kentucky offense. You know, people hear about Bobby Petrino and Antonio Andrews included. You think pass happy. And Andrews said at first he was a little concerned about what his role would be in that offense, but it didn't take long for him to figure out quote coach Petrino is a guru he'll find a way to get me the ball and get this offense worked around what it's got yeah and he's going to find out who his best players are and how to best utilize those guys and he's certainly one of the best players on their roster and running balls of the ball is something they've always done Bobby Petrino and staff they do on first down Andrews a big hole and Tugs Ashley Lowry for a ride and a 15 yard gain to the 35. Antonio Andrews, a senior out of Fort Campbell, Kentucky, the second player in NCAA history to top 3,000 all-purpose yards in a season. And again, Barry Sanders, the only other guy to do it. Not necessarily the fastest guy, just a smart, effective runner. All right, and people always ask, well, how fast is this guy? Well, all I know is when I turn on the film, he is fast enough. You see him making plays all over the place. Football fast. That's right, with pads on. From the 35, Dowdy in rhythm but low. 
His first incompletion of the game is intended for Taewon Taylor, true freshman out of Louisville, Kentucky. And it's second down and 10. Bobby Petrino said he'd be interested to see how Brandon Dowdy handled really getting hit for the first time. First true game action in two seasons. And so far, his offensive line has kept him upright. Right. All spring and fall camp, it's in controlled situations. It's much different on Saturday on game day. He's handled himself well so far. Second down and 10. That box is crowded. They bounce outside, and Andrews has a first down to midfield. Flag comes in from the secondary at the end of the play. Fred Tiller shoved him out of bounds after 15 yards. Seen a high number of flags already in this game, often the case in season openers. During the run, illegal block below the waist, number two, offense. It was a side block by a restricted player. 15-yard penalty, replay, second down. And the thing is, I'm pretty sure that came at the end of the play after Andrews had already picked up the first down. And boy, you always need your wide receivers to buy into the run game and block on the perimeter. But I tell you, that's, that one hurts right there when you get some momentum going, you're establishing the run. The running power, a little pin and pull scheme right there. Andrews back in a rhythm. Top of your frame. See this block right there, number two, right there, coming in from behind and at an angle. Dottie looking back near side, floating it. Henry, first down of the 40. These tight ends will be critical for this offense and the first time that Dowdy finds one, this one for 25. And Mitchell Henry replacing a four-year starter in Jack Doyle. Yeah, Jeff Brom talked about design shot plays. There it is. Play action away, rolling the tight end on a wheel route away from action. Outstanding design. And this will be a false, false start. start on Andrews. Number five. Offense, five-yard penalty. Was leaning forward before that ball was snapped. <laughs> Second penalty on Bobby Petrino's squad in this first quarter. And a first down and 15 at the 44. Dowdy looking short. It's Little McNeil. McNeil back into the teeth of the defense. Has 13, second and two. Ashley Lowry in on the tackle. We're the only guy that has any kind of experience at the wide receiver court. Again, Dowdy accurate with the football, getting it out of his hands quickly. Knew exactly where to go with that football. What the concept was what he was looking at, and then delivered it on target. And Nate Willis is the injured player. Willis only the starter because Cody Quinn has been dealing with an injury himself. So Quinn out with the ankle injury. And Willis, a guy that joined the team partway through camp after he finished up his junior college degree. They're already thin in the secondary. Yeah, thin and concerned with experience back there. Now that's two guys. Now you're down to your third corner out there. Things get a little dicey back there, and it makes you a little conservative on what you do on, on the front end with that front seven, how many chances you take. And we knew this back seven would be a question mark. So far, Brandon Dowdy has taken advantage with solid numbers. You yeah, have done a nice job mixing up the run and pass and rhythm and timing throws, taking a few design shot plays, and they've been able to hit most of them. They've been there. They just got to finish them. Second and two. Here comes Andrews. First down inside the 25 for Antonio Andrews. The former Kentucky Mr. Football is a high school quarterback. 
He was 29 and 0 as his starter and sees things, sees things that other running backs don't. And you're just going to see outside zone with a little quarterback fake zone read out the backside to control that backside end. Offensive line just taking guys down the line of scrimmage, displacing them, and nice north and south running by Andrews, pressing the line of scrimmage. From the 24, back to Andrews. Ace in running gets him close to the 15 where he deliver where he absorbs a blow from Eric Dixon. He'll give him eight yards, it'll be second and two. And you'll see this is part of the game that carries over from last year. They're gonna pull the guard, double team down, run power, and all good running backs that run the power play know that ball hits best in those A gaps. You'll see him make the cut back inside and get north and south. That's heads up running. Second down and two. Out of the offset eye. Play action. Dowdy booting. Pressure. Gets rid of it to the feet of Higby, and it's third down and short. Bud Dupree, an emerging star for this Kentucky defense, was waiting for him as soon as he turned his head. Yeah, nice discipline by the defensive end. Dupree again to stay at home and play contained. Smart heads up football for the junior out of Georgia. Now Kentucky will try and get a stop on third down. Last season's third down defense for Kentucky was the worst in the SEC in a decade. Toss to Andrews, short side, cut back, first and goal. He just sees things that most running backs don't. Yeah, I got love it. They're going to crack back on the defensive end, pull the tackle, and look at the cutback run by Andrews. North and south, heading his shoulder pads down towards the end zone. A nice combination of the run game that they've installed here at Western Kentucky. And it meshes really well with what they did last year. Just slightly different twists, a lot more one-back sets from the Petrino squad. Andrews averaging more than eight yards of carry in this first quarter. They feed him again. This time, white shirts around him, and he's dropped by Bud Dupree. And it'll be second down and goal with another injured player in this first quarter winding down. It's Mr. Cobble who gets to his feet. Mr. His given name. His parents always wanted to have a kid named Mr. They got a boy and got their wish. Yeah, well, you can be called Mr. when you're 340 pounds. <laughs> it's 7-3 Western Kentucky through with a quarter as a pair of new eras begin in Nashville. On to the second. In 1979, Western Kentucky student Ralph Carey created Big Red, whose head is supposed to be shaped like a hill. Of course, the hilltoppers and the campus sits up on top of a hill in Bowling Green above the Barren River. And that is the ever popular Big Red. There is the increasingly popular Bobby Petrino as Western Kentucky's off to a solid start in his coaching debut. They've got it second down and goal and work out of an empty set for first year starter Brandon Dowdy. Underneath, it's complete. And spinning inside the five is Willie McNeil. Was cut down after a gain of six, third down and goal. Nice protection by the offensive line. Kentucky tries to add on late. It's a shallow crossing route by the wide receiver, McNeil, right there. Open, tough catch in traffic. Got to like that from the redshirt junior. Power set on third and goal from the three. Downhill, it's Andrews for the touchdown. And he salutes as a tribute to his military family. His dad, a member of the Army, stationed in Fort Campbell where he played his high school ball. And he's got a touchdown to put Western Kentucky on the board once more. Andrews running with authority. Extra point is good for Garrett Schwetman. 
Down the goal line situation, there's always one guy that's unblocked, and you're going to be left one on one. And you'll see Andrews right there. There's no fear in his heart. He lowers his pads, puts it down, and knew exactly where the end zone was. Great blocking by the O line up front. Gave him the one on one situation. He lowers his pads and takes on the corner for six. Enjoyed visiting with Andrews yesterday. You can always tell, I think, when a kid comes from a military family and that structure that he comes from, very yes, sir, no, sir, and enjoyed visiting with him yesterday. What a pleasure talking to that young man. Uh, has his head screwed on straight. Team guy, excited about the change. Talked about the change in structure and how the players responded. And very humble for the numbers he put up. He's got to be one of the best running backs out there that no one's really heard of. Yeah, that season of 3,000 all-purpose yards last year. Second best in NCAA history. There's a chance that his carries go down this year. There's also a chance that his numbers stay the same because this pace will be quicker than it was under Willie Taggart, who is now the head coach in South Florida. They do in there with a game against McNeese State tonight. Well, like we said, Antonio Andrews said that he was a bit concerned at first when he saw Bobby Petrino was hired because of his propensity to throw the ball, but it didn't take long to convince him that it'd still be a good fit for him. DeMarco Robinson retreating. Take a look at our impact players now. Raymond Sanders, Andrew Jackson. Yeah, Raymond Sanders, when you're trying to be balanced in this spread type of offense, air raid, you've got to get your running back going. Raymond Sanders is going to be a big part of that. On the other side of the ball, Andrew Jackson is a tackling machine. Led the Sun Belt in tackles. He's physical, he's violent, and he goes sideline to sideline. Be a great matchup to watch all night long. Uh, Jackson, you mentioned leading the Sun Belt in tackles back to back seasons. Nick Holt knows what he's inherited. And Jackson. And the top six tacklers off of last season's defense, which was one of the best in the Sun Belt. Jalen Whitlow back to work. First and 10 of the 25. Sanders with a crease for five. Tackle made by Xavius Boyd, second and five. Xavius Boyd's a guy they use in a lot of different ways. He's such a good athlete. He doesn't have to come off the field. He stays in and nickel. He's a guy they like to blitz and attack the line of scrimmage with when he's not in coverage. Pressure coming from the near side. And he was offside. Sanders breaks loose. Cuts by Dowling. Down to the 20 with a flag down. It's back at the line of scrimmage. And it looked like the blitzer from Western Kentucky got a head start, and this should stand. It was Marcus Ward, number eight, that came Offside. on the blitz. Defense, number eight, the penalty is declined. First down. And so a gain of 50. You'll see it. They've been pressure from the field. And Kentucky runs the ball to Sanders back into the boundary. Big play, explosive play. Sanders will get a breath. Jonathan George back in. And with the ball on first down, trying to find some room. But those red shirts producing a wall led by Xavius Boyd once again. And Arius right in from his safety spot to help Boyd. Is that time as a starter now in all four seasons in Western Kentucky. It's a little bit overshadowed because of the publicity that Andrew Jackson tends to get. And like you talked about, an extra important piece to this defense for all they're asking him to do. JoJo Kemp into the game at running back. Jalen Whitlow's first carry. Whitlow will score. 19-yard touchdown run for the sophomore. 
Quarterback power off a fly sweep. They pull the guard. There's Jalen Whitlow again going north and south. That's why they put him in the ball game. The extra dynamic he brings to the position. You see him keep his feet in bounds and stretch for the pylon. Big play when Kentucky needed him. So that's the dimension of the offense that he brings that Maxwell Smith really doesn't. And the 19-yard touchdown run, the first touchdown of the Mark Stoops era for Kentucky. This bluegrass battle taking place in the Music City. Been an exciting start. Western Kentucky, a program that became an FBS program transitionally in 2008, officially 2009, and went 4 and 36 in their first 40 games as an FBS program, but 14 and 7 since. And Bobby Petrino has inherited a group that was turned around by Willie Taggart down at South Florida now. Robinson and Andrews back to receive this kick from Joe Mansour. And Andrews will watch it bounce. So we saw Jalen Whitlow going from 19 yards. You'll see a little quarterback power read or the inverted veer. You'll see them isolate this defensive end, pull here, a double team back there. The quarterback will ride and then keep the ball as the running back goes across to defeat that and confuse that defensive end that goes unblocked. You see him hit the hole, splits the defense, and you see the athleticism, why he has the football in his hands. Let's check in with Chris. Hey, guys. We'll We're having some technical difficulties down on the sideline. We'll get back with Chris in just a moment. As Western Kentucky comes back out on offense from the 25. Dowdy quickly to McNeil. It's a block in front from Joel German, and he's able to get nine yards on first down with a tackle coming out of the secondary from Blake McLean. So an efficient start to this game for Brandon Dowdy, which was the goal for this offensive staff, getting as many easy throws as they could. They've thrown often, they've thrown underneath, and balance it well with a run. Yeah, I think the key word is really a balanced offensive attack. Here comes Andrews, already nearing 100 yards. The first down to the 38. Fred Tiller there for the stop with Avery Williamson, who was the SEC's second leading tackler last year. Dowdy, a guy that Jeff Brown, the old coordinator, recruited while he was at FAU down in Florida. Help the relationship ease into it. And it calls a play action pass on first down. Willie McNeil has it go off his hands. Avery Williamson jarred loose, second and ten. Well, Willie McNeil again had a chance to make a catch in traffic. Cannot hang on to the football. Boy, you got to make those plays. You get a chance, your quarterback puts it on you. Got to find a way to come down on it. Tough play, but second drop we've seen for yeah. McNeil, who is, again, the only guy with any kind of significant experience in this wide receiving core. Outside of him, this group accounted for one catch last year. Straight drop on second down. Underneath, here comes German. Sliced down by Blake McLean, the true freshman, second tackle. As German gets his first catch in two seasons, it's third down and short. Yeah, Joel just going down the shallow crossing route. Picking up a chunky yardage makes it a manageable third down for Western Kentucky. And a chance for Kentucky to get off of the field. They could not do this last year. Bigger back, Keyshawn Simpson. Play action. 
Wide open down the middle of the field for a first down. Ball pops loose. Trickling inside the 10, and Kentucky jumps on top of it. Wildcat football at the 5. Tyler Higby had a big game for Western Kentucky, but coughed it up. There is a flag down back near the line of scrimmage. Now, Western Kentucky's players are signaling that that is a roughing the passer. We'll find out officially from Tom Ritter. Personal foul, rushing the passer, number 50. Defense, 15 yards from the previous spot, first down. Mike Douglas. And you'll see Douglas coming late. What a great play action fake, great design. Comes in, puts a helmet underneath the chin. They're going to call that most of the time these days. The ball was gone. Avoid the contact. But in taking the penalty, they do erase the play, which finished, remember, with Kentucky falling on top. So Western Kentucky retains possession, but Big after break. 39. Yeah, absolutely. And a second chance for Brandon Dowdy. Play clock winds inside of five. Another play action pass off his back foot. It's Higby again for a first down. Tyler Higby, redshirt sophomore out of Clearwater, Florida, was one of the guys that Bobby Petrino was really excited about watching. Well, I'll tell you what, they see the misdirection of the backfield, split flow action, they get the quarterback down the edge, and then they have the tight end hanging out on the sideline there, making a catch. You can see why Bobby Vecino, people talk about his play calling ability. He has got a feel for that part of the game, the shot plays, when to take them. He's aggressive in nature that way. He's Sean Simpson. Not a big hole, but big enough to squeeze the six foot, 245 pounder through there. Into the arms of Avery Williamson. Gain of five or six in second down and four. But what they're doing is they're pounding the line of scrimmage. That's why the protection's been fairly clean. They're establishing that line of scrimmage, that veteran offensive line, 90 starts between the five of them. They have taken control of this game, and they're playing outstanding, mixing things up. I love what I see from Western Kentucky right now. Second and four. Simpson swings out. Tight end again. First down. This time to Mitchell Henry. Eric Dixon. Avery Williamson with a stop. And it's first and goal. And one of the things that we talked about with Jeff Brom and Bobby Pacino is playing to their strengths. And the strength of their offensive football team was their O-line, their running backs, and tight ends. And that's been on display here in this first half of football so far. More than 230 total yards of offense for Western Kentucky. Which will operate first and goal from the eight. Here's Simpson sticking the nose down and rumbling to the two. Boy, he was hit at about the line of scrimmage and still managed to get five. Yeah, that's because he's a 245-pound running back. It wasn't clean inside, but physical, finishing the run behind his pads, lowering them. You got to love what you see. I think the real pleasant surprise here, too, so far in this first half has been the play of Brandon Dowdy. That was a real question mark. They liked what they saw, but boy, he has executed a very high level in this offense. Simpson stays in. Kadeem Jones, the fullback. Jones leading the way for Simpson's second score. Touchdown, Western Kentucky. Came into the game with two career touchdowns and the fifth-year senior that's had to battle injuries for much of his career on the hill. 
has doubled that touchdown total in this first half. Extra point added on by Schwetman. 21-10 Western Kentucky. The drive kept alive by roughing the passer penalty. And Western Kentucky does what good teams do, take advantage. Western Kentucky with a 21-10 lead, and again, it's Keyshawn Simpson plunging in from short yardage. Yeah, there's no spread here. This is good old-fashioned football. The G lead down on the goal line. Kick out by the onside guard, lead by the fullback, and downhill running by Keyshawn Simpson. That smash-mouth physical football at the line of scrimmage. Guys are finishing blocks. You got to love that. And you're talking with Coach Petrino, and he said, yeah, he knows that the reputation is that he's a passing guy, but he said, look back at those numbers at Louisville in his first couple of years there when they were in the top 10 nationally in running the football. More than 200 yards a game with guys like Michael Bush carrying the load. So Kentucky to begin at the 25. The Wildcats have begun to get some rhythm offensively. They've done it with Jalen Whitlow at quarterback. We didn't know coming into the game who Mark Stoops would start. But he's gone with his sophomore out of Prattville, Alabama. How would you assess his plays so far? I tell you, I have been so impressed with it. And Whitlow, I thought he's done a good job. His athleticism, you see why they pulled the trigger on him. Because they need playmakers. And he gives you one with his ball, the ball in his hands on every snap. And he's not done a ton throwing the ball, three for five, but he's done it with his feet. Here's a screen that's shut down. Xavius Blue gets clocked by Xavius Boyd for a loss of two. That is the old jailbreak screen. The tunnel screen actually come back on the inside, and there's J Xavius Boyd to make the hit. That'll make you think twice about going in the middle. Second and 12, Sanders shot down. His Western Kentucky defense, which was one of the best in the Sun Belt last year, returning its top six tacklers. Barry Boyd, the brother of Xavius Boyd, getting his name mentioned on the broadcast with a solid play from his defensive end spot. Well, you tell this uh, Western Kentucky defense is feeding off what that offense just did. Now they are attacking the line of scrimmage in a rhythm. See if they can hold up here on third and long. Four in the pattern for Whitlow with seven in coverage. They'll go underneath. Incomplete. Off of the hands of Javis Blue. And then Cam Thomas had a shot to pick it off. Fourth down. Nick Holt, defensive coordinator, plays coverage behind the four-man rush. They get some pressure on him. You see the feet get happy. Eyes are still downfield, but nowhere to go with the football. Antonio Andrews. Close to, a one, close to 100 yards rushing already today. Waits back for Landon Foster's punt. <laughs> 40-yard punt. Five-yard return. And Western Kentucky back on offense. On the other side of this break. Western Kentucky out in front in this season opener. Keyshawn Simpson has a couple of touchdowns, and Chris has more on him. Hey, guys, well, Simpson was actually supposed to be opening day starter last year, and then he got injured with a knee injury. That's when Antonio Andrews just had an incredible season. But offensive coordinator Jeff Brom called him the hardest worker on this team, and you can tell it's paying off with those two touchdowns already, guys. All right, Chris. Yeah, Simpson last season wound up having just 20 carries. And coming into this game, two touchdowns in four years at Western Kentucky. Two tonight, and a first down at the 44 for the Hilltoppers. 
They start the drive with play action. And Dowdy goes underneath to his tight end. Henry's got it, but Williamson's got him five yards, second and five. Well, again, Western Kentucky taking advantage of the fact they've been all run the football. You have to honor that play action fake inside. Create seams and holes for your tight end. You got to love the impact of which Avery Williamson came up and made that play. Unquestioned leader of that Kentucky defense, number 40 in white. Yeah, he's always in the box. He makes the calls and checks. Second down and five. Dowdy another quick throw on time but dropped. And it's Willie McNeil's third drop of the day. A guy that needs to be a leader of this group. Well, again, Dowdy making the right decision with the football. You're going to play soft coverage on me. I'm going to make the quick completion on you. And at least attempt to and see if my guy can break a tackle. Now McNeil just has to hang on to the football. Western Kentucky, two of three on third down so far. Empty set. Empty box as well. But a flag down, and this is going to be third and ten after a false start. False start. 15, offense. Five-yard penalty remains third down. And that's the freshman out there. Nick Norris out of Miami. Again, now third and longer. Shortens that playbook a pretty good bit. And now Mark Stoops will take a timeout. We'll take it with him. Big third down coming up on the other side. PN as well. Mark Stoops' offense been moving at a NASCAR pace. His defense trying to come up with a stop here on third and ten. They need a stop right here to give their offense the ball back. Just try to get something done before the end of the first half. They drop seven. Dowdy steps into it underneath throw, and Andrews dances for a first down and then loses the football. Side judge runs in and marks him down. It's a gain of 13 and a first down. I love what I see in Brandon Dowdy. Again, take what the defense gives you. Holds on to it, hits his check down, and trusts the fact that Andrews has enough in him to pick up the first down. Dave, the officials just got together and changed that call to the side judge he made. It's Kentucky football. Fumble boy that could that, that changed everything. That's that's what Kentucky needed right there They needed something good to happen like that. Let's take another look at that again There you see Andrews shedding one tackler and that ball comes out great hustle By the Kentucky defender to come back in and put a paw on the football it was the side judge. Blake McLean. That, yeah, side judge came in and signaled it down, but the back judge, which had the better look, stepped in and said, no, that ball was out. Good call. Here's Whitlow. Cuts it upfield. First down. Whitlow into the open field. Look at his speed. First down to the 14. Jonathan Dowling tracked him down after 53 yards. Again, the design quarterback run makes you play 11 on 11. Great block by the fullback out in space on the arc release. And Whitlow knows exactly what to do with the football once he gets it. That's why he's in there for Kentucky. Another playmaker with the ball in his hand. Over 70 yards rushing in the first half now. Sanders into the short side of the field, pulled down at the line of scrimmage by Andrew Jackson, who's led the Sun Belt in tackles in back-to-back -back seasons. It's been 30 years since a player has led Western Kentucky in tackles in three straight years. You've got to go back to the early 80s to find that. That yeah. is production. Yeah. That's uh, over a period of time, too. And those are two impact players going at it. So Sanders will exit the game. Ryan Timmons comes in, giving him an extra receiver on this second down and 10. 
And JoJo Kemp in the game as well. It's Kemp running outside. Kemp reaches, and they'll spot him inside the five-yard line. Jonathan Dowling nudged him out of bounds. On a pickup of 13, first down in goal, Kentucky. The quick tempo, the quick snap, speed sweep out into the boundary. I said first and goal, they've actually spotted him about a foot short, so third and inches for Kentucky. So some signs of life for this Kentucky offense. All sparked by Jalen Whitlow, who was only a part-time quarterback at Powerhouse High School program Prattville in Alabama, just outside of Montgomery. It was mainly a wide receiver, but wanted to go somewhere where he'd have a chance to play quarterback. That old staff promised him the chance without thinking that he'd probably get that chance as a freshman a few games into the season last year. Well, and, and like Coach has told us, you know, in our meetings, is that he was kind of thrown to the fire. You know, not a lot of weapons around him and had a tough go of it, too. But boy, he's showing some resolve right now and some playmaking ability. And Kentucky trying to capitalize off of Western Kentucky's second turnover of the game. It's third and short. Bigger back, Jonathan George, in the game in the pistol. Low snap picked up. George is in. Touchdown, Kentucky. To the more physical rusher, Jonathan George. Who had four touchdowns a season ago. Dropped 10 pounds in the offseason. Helped him slip through that small crease. And Kentucky's within a score. Well, this is obviously a critical score for Kentucky. But the way they did is even more important. Just a downhill run right there out of the pistol. Physical at the line of scrimmage, they pull the backside guard, and they get physical and nasty, which is something they've got to be able to do. Tremendous impact on their football team right now because Western Kentucky was shoving the ball down their throats. They needed to answer and match the physicality at the line of scrimmage, and they did just that with that touchdown. This offense is called the air raid. <laughs> And so you don't blame people for wondering what the ground game is going to be like. Neil Brown, offensive coordinator, who learned the offense as a walk-on at Kentucky back in the 90s under Hal Mummy, one of the fathers of the spread, says Coach Mummy did a lot of things well. Running the football wasn't one of the things he wanted to do. Neil Brown, on the other hand, that's a big part of his air raid. Well, and you see what's now it's evolving even more besides just running the power, oh, the, the ISO play or the draw. Now they've got an athletic quarterback, so now the inverted veer comes into place, uh, the quarterback option, all those things, another weapon for them to get going that the defense has to contend with and defend. And right now, I, th that drive was critical for Kentucky to answer the call. They do it off a Western Kentucky turnover. Mansour to send it away to Andrews and Robinson in the closing minutes of this first half. Good high kick, but Andrews will bring it back. 21-yard return. Andrews with the touchdown today, but he's fumbled twice. And Kentucky has converted those two fumbles into 10 of their 17 points. Been a good first half for the Toppers offensively, but a big drive right here. Absolutely. 350 left in the second quarter. They start with play action. 
And Henry's wide open in the flats. The tight end runs for 14 yards and a first down close to the 35. Fred Tiller made the stop. Great job of the tight end, Henry, again, of blocking, holding, showing patience, and then sneaking out into the flat off the play action and quarterback keep action. He was wide open for a chunky yardage. Replacing a guy in Jack Doyle, who now plays in this stadium for the Tennessee Titans. Dowdy all kinds of time. Right back to Henry, who's planted by Henderson. Got four, second and six. You can see why the coaching staff at Western Kentucky was so excited about their tight ends. And there's an example right there. Look at the pass distribution. A lot of guys touching the football. That's exactly what this offense is designed to do. FTS is the model that Bobby Petrina likes to use. Feed the studs. Trying to tailor his offense around the guys that he's got at his disposal. And on the second down play, empties it out. Dowdy under seeds got rid of it. To Taewon Taylor, the freshman, but Mike Douglas was right on top of him. And it'll be third down in about two. One of the things Jeff Brown was concerned about was the edge rusher to Kentucky. They said, we don't have guys that look like that. This offensive line is held up, but a great example of what that pressure can do and what a concentration by Dowdy to keep his eyes downfield, calm in the pocket, and make positive yards with something that could have been a sack. Out of the eye, third and short. And I don't believe that he got it. They went to Andrews. Mike Douglas again, a backup defensive tackle, part of a unit that is the strength of this Kentucky team. They spotted the ball to the 43. You'll see the pursuit of that defense on the backside, not giving up on the play, fighting off the blocker, backside pursuit, and that's Mike Douglas. That's hustle, that's heart. That helps you win football games. Fourth and one, own 43-yard line. Minute 55 left in this half. What do you do? I think you got to. I think you got to kick it. <laughs> you got to kick it. Trust your defense. We'll see what Bobby Petrino decides to do. You'd hate to give Kentucky a short field and momentum chance to kick a field goal at least going into the half. I mean, I like everything about having confidence in your offense and pounding it, but if you don't make it. I think the risk far outweighs the reward at this point in time in the ballgame. And Bobby Petrino agrees with you. And for the first time today, sends the punt team onto the field with Hendricks Brakefield, a four year starter out of right here in Nashville, Tennessee. DeMarco Robinson waiting back. Fair catch made of the 10. Up on a 46 yards. Well, for Mark Stoops, you don't really have to say let's go two minute because you can't work much faster than they do normally. <laughs> it's what they do. This is easy for them. Let's just see if they can execute, right? Game. That's seven plus yards of play, eight plus yards of play. Sanders had daylight but tripped up, got two, second down and eight. One time out left for Kentucky. Which is not led in this game. This is actually the slowest we've seen them work. Substitution being an issue right now, trying to get the right personnel on the field. Empty it out for second down. Robinson gets thrown down. What a play by Tyree Robinson. Give it to Marco Robinson, no shot to get upfield. You'll see Tyree Robinson make the break on the ball and defeat the blocker. That's want to making a play for your football team. Great reactions, great timing. You'll see him. There it is, no hesitation. He breaks and goes through the wide receiver's block to make that tackle. That's the most experienced player on this defense tonight, making his 34th career start. A four-year starter for the Hilltoppers in beating a freshman in Ryan Timmons that's playing the first half of his college career. The 
Western Kentucky with the lead, but you've got to figure the energy and excitement that it built in these programs with the new hires has only gone up with his first half of play on both sides. I think it has, and, and Western Kentucky's kind of been pretty consistent throughout the whole thing, except for the turnovers. I, I'm glad to see Kentucky showed some real resolve in fighting back and some big playability, and what got it going for them was their quarterback. Jalen Whitlow, I mean, he's a guy that's got things going. Difficult to defend. See why he's in there. We'll see if he can make some magic here on third and long. So third down. A flag down. Western Kentucky saying there was movement up front. Ball start, number 77, offense. Five-yard penalty, remains third down. Please reset the game clock to one minute, 10 seconds. Third false minute, start penalty for Kentucky. Thank you. Well, I tell you, guys are acting like they're blitzing. They're coming off the edge. They're talking. The crowd's loud. That's when it happens. Western Kentucky, one timeout left. There's another false start. Xavius Boyd was showing a blitz off of the edge, and the right tackle Jordan Swindle came onto it, came onto his heels. Prior to the snap, false start, number 70, offense, half the distance to the goal remains third down.